Hello everyone, welcome to Clear IAS. In this video, we will be discussing about COVID-19 variants. I am Ujwala Pulala, an educator at Clear IAS. Introduction COVID-19 is the disease caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus, which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. It was first discovered in Wuhan, China and the first case was reported on December 1, 2019. It spreads in air when the virus droplets get released from the infected persons while talking, sneezing or coughing. However, the source of transmission of this virus to the humans still remains unclear. What are variants? Viruses have the tendency to change over time. These changes are known as mutations. At times, these changes become completely different from the original virus and are known as variations. These are studied by a process known as sequencing, which is mapping of the genetic material. VOIs versus VOCs. VOI stands for Variant of Interest and VOC stands for Variant of Concern. In simple terms, a variant is considered to be a VOI when it is suspected to be more contagious with the ability to cause severe disease and with the ability to escape the effectiveness of vaccines. A VOI becomes a VOC when there is a clear evidence suggesting the above factors. So in simple terms, whenever there is an evidence suggesting a variant is capable of exhibiting the above factors, then it is considered to be a VOI. And whenever it is proven beyond doubt that the variant is capable of transmitting at higher rates and causing severe disease, then it is classified as VOC. Examples of VOC are Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta and the recent Omicron. So these are the designated variants of concern by WHO, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta and Omicron. However, as per the latest reports, Alpha, Beta and Gamma are considered as variants being monitored. VBM and VOHC. So as we have discussed, VBM stands for Variants Being Monitored and VOHC stands for Variants of High Consequence. A variant which doesn't pose any potential danger or whose transmission is in low levels is considered as a VBM. So over the times, the classification can change. That is, previously the variants which were considered as variants of concern like Alpha, Beta, Gamma, now they have been classified as Variants Being Monitored. On the other hand, a variant which makes the current preventive measures and vaccines ineffective is considered as the VOHC. However, as of now, there are no variants of high consequence. Naming of the variants For easy identification and tracking of different variants, naming them is necessary. This also helps with the discussions in the media and the public. WHO started naming the different variants using the Greek alphabet. Omicron variant Omicron has high transmissibility in comparison to previous known variants. It spreads more easily and the ones infected with the virus usually show no severe symptoms. The cases of hospitalization due to Omicron have been far lesser than that of Delta which was responsible for the second wave in India. Mild symptoms like cold and cough are usually being reported in the persons infected with this variant. Sore throat was a predominant symptom. The third wave in the country is driven by Omicron and according to the survey by ICMR that is Indian Council of Medical Research, younger population was more infected. The average age of population during third wave was found to be around 44 unlike the earlier average at 55 years. Delta versus Omicron Delta variant designated as B16172 was one of the most deadliest variants seen till date. Here B16172 is the scientific name and for easy identification they are named as Delta, Omicron, Alpha, Beta etc. 
it was the one responsible for the second wave in the country causing high casualties whereas omicron is the most recent variant and is designated as b11529 both delta and omicron are considered as the variants of concern how the variants differ that is these are the differences between delta and omicron variants in the case of delta the symptoms lasted for about 10 days whereas in the case of omicron they lasted for about 4 to 5 days the symptoms in the case of delta were high fever loss of smell and taste difficulty in breathing pain in the chest and fall in the oxygen saturation levels whereas in case of omicron the symptoms are fever dizziness and sore throat and during the second wave most patients were unvaccinated and during the third wave that is the wave caused by omicron most patients were fully vaccinated and breakthrough infections were very high protection from variants for getting protected from the many variants in circulation one has to follow the guidelines like maintaining social distancing norms wearing masks and covering mouth and nose properly maintaining personal hygiene avoiding crowded and closed spaces getting vaccinated variant versus mutation according to the definition stated by cdc mutation is considered as a single change in the genetic code whereas variant is considered as a genetic code with one or more mutations mutations variants and strains mutation is a change in the virus genetic sequence and they are extremely common whereas variant is a virus whose genetic sequence differs from its parent significantly and whereas strain is a variant with many mutations that significantly alter its behavior like increased transmissibility etc effectiveness of vaccines WHO approved many vaccines for emergency use after clinical trials. All the approved vaccines are proving to be effective against the existing strains of COVID. Although they provide protection against severe illnesses and death, no vaccine can be considered to be 100% effective. Breakthrough infections can still occur in the people. Breakthrough infections are the ones which occur in fully vaccinated people. Also as the virus keeps on mutating more severe strains can develop which can reduce the effectiveness of known vaccines We are still learning about the corona virus and the efficacy of vaccines on its different strains The scientific community is constantly reviewing the new evidence In the meantime one has to get fully vaccinated when one's turn comes Also all the precautions need to be taken to avoid getting infected with the virus in the first place Vaccine efficacy and vaccine effectiveness Vaccine efficacy refers to how the vaccine performs in ideal conditions that is controlled clinical trials whereas vaccine effectiveness refers to how the vaccine performs in wider populations that is in real life scenario So this was a short video regarding the important terms concerning COVID-19 virus. I hope you all liked it. Thank you and please subscribe to our channel Clear IAS.